Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to add more games to your Sega Genesis Mini using HackGCE. If you're not familiar with that program, it's what everybody uses to hack their NES and SNES classic. It allows you to do so much more with your system and it's extremely easy to use. Before we get started, I want to thank the following users for making this happen. Download the newest version of Hatchy CE, that will be 3.7. I'll have a download link in my description for you. Once you have that downloaded, open up the folder and then double click on Hatchy CE. You may get a notification like this saying that Windows protected your PC. So it may be a good idea to disable your firewall, virus protection, or if you're using a VPN prior to installing this. And you may get a security alert from your firewall saying that it blocked a program. You have to allow access to HackG for this to work correctly. I recommend installing the debug version because it comes with this window right here and that can help you troubleshoot with some of the developers if you are having trouble. And these are all the games that come on the Sega Genesis Mini. There's 87 games native to the system itself, which is why there's not too much space to use. And now you cannot remove these games from the system itself to save more space, but you can hide them from your menu. Just go up here to View, Original Games, and Hidden. And then all those games that are native to the system won't be on your menu here. Now we're going to talk hardware, and this is very important. The micro USB cable that came with your Sega Genesis Mini is useless with HackG. It will not work. It doesn't have data lines, so you cannot use it to hack your system. If you have an NES or SNES Classic, those cables will work. And if you have a Samsung phone with the charging cable, I was told those cables work as well. There's a three pack of cables you can get that have different sizes, and I have one you can order with a single cable. So we're going to take the USB end, plug it into our PC, and we're going to take the micro USB and plug it into the back of the Genesis Mini. Once you've attached the cable, it's time to go into HackG CE. Go to this kernel tab right here. Go to Install Repair. It'll ask if you want to flash the custom kernel. Select Yes. Then it's going to give you a list of steps you have to take to do this. The first thing I do is turn on the system with nothing plugged into it. Then I'm going to hold down the reset button. While holding down the reset button, I'm going to attach the micro USB cable that's plugged into our PC. And you should hear a chime on your PC. As soon as that chime stops, I let go of the reset button. So now HackG is installing. This will take just a couple minutes. Once it's completed, you should get this message right here saying done. You can upload games to your mini now. We're going to hit OK. And we want this green light in the bottom left. This is very important. This lets us know that our system is successfully connected to our PC. Currently, it's recommended to add only about 100 games per page to limit slowdown. Let's start adding some Sega Genesis games to our system now. What you need to do is go to the bottom left to this Add More Games button. And your game files can be in different formats like .bin, .gen, and they can be zipped. All you have to do is highlight the games that you want, hit Open, and they'll be added to HackG. And the games are listed here in this main window. A couple important things when you highlight one of your games. You want to look at this command line right here. The slash bin slash m2 engage means that these games will run on the native emulator on the Sega Genesis Mini. And if that's what you want to do, you're fine. You don't have to change the command line, but you still have to add your box art and your spine. So we've clicked the first game here. If we click the artwork tab, you'll see we have a generic Sega Genesis cartridge. If you hit Google, a new window pops up and it'll give you some options for your box art. And because the Genesis Mini comes with a bookshelf mode when you hit the B button, you can also select a spine to use. So you can pick your logo and then you can go through the spines to see a little preview of each one. You can get box art for multiple games by highlighting the ones you want right clicking and selecting download box art for selected games. If you look at the bottom of HackG, you see how many games you have selected and how much space you have left in the overall total. We're gonna add a few more games from other Sega systems like the Master System, 32X, and Game Gear. Instead of hitting the add more games button, you can highlight your games and drag them directly into HackG. After you add the games, you may have trouble finding them, especially if they're from a different system because your games are sorted alphabetically. By going up to view, and sort by, you can select to arrange your games alphabetically by core or console. I usually do console. I threw an N64 game in there as well. As you can see now, it's a lot easier to navigate through the games that you have separated by system. If we were to highlight one of the games, you can see the command line is different because these games will not run with the native emulator on the Sega Genesis. To get these games to run, we have to install a third party app called RetroArc. Along with RetroArc, you have to install the system core that corresponds with that game. The cores we're using come from KMFD Manic's core set, and he's put a ton of time and dedication into this core set. These are the best cores you're gonna find for these games. To install RetroArc and those cores, go to the Modules tab and the KMFD Mod Hub. Go to the KMFD RetroArc tab, highlight the newest version of RetroArc Extreme, 
hit download module. Now go to the KMFD course tab and there's a ton of cores here. If there's a system you want on here, more than likely he's got a core for it. So we'll download Bloopin for N64. There's two main Sega cores to pick from. You have Pico Drive and Genesis Plus GX. The difference between the two is that Pico Drive allows for 32X games. Genesis Plus GX allows for Master System games. Since we have one of each, we're going to download both of these. We can close out the mod hub, go back to your modules tab, and install extra modules. You can't just download the cores, you also have to install them to the system for these to work. So in this next window, make sure you put a check mark next to RetroArch and whatever cores you're going to install. Hit the OK button down here. Looks like everything installed fine. Hit the OK button and you'll see here our max storage space has gone down. Whenever you install these cores or RetroArch, your max amount of storage will be reduced. Now I'm going to show you what to do if you have a game that does not work with M2 Engage. Unfortunately, M2 Engage is not a great emulator. It was created just to play the games that came on your system. So there's a lot of games that you can add to your system, but they won't work with that emulator. So we'll take a game like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist. Right click the game, go down to select emulation core. Click on the game and you should see a list of consoles over here to the side. Any cores that you installed will show up here on the list, such as Genesis Plus GX, or Pico Drive like we installed before. So I want this to run with Genesis Plus GX. I'm gonna highlight that, click apply in the corner, and hit close. Now if we go back to our games list, you can see that the command line has been changed to reflect the game opening with that other core. Any game you add that is not a Genesis game should already have the command line change for you. So Rostan, Mega Man for Game Gear, Spider-Man for 32X. Last thing I'm gonna show you is how to create folders. So we're gonna go up here to the structure button, click the custom option, and then we have to do it one more time, structure, custom and this is our folder manager screen i'm going to split it by console and you see now we have folders for every system but i want to keep my sega genesis games on the main screen it's as easy as opening up the genesis folder highlighting all the games and then drag them into this window over here the wes 1981 has created some amazing folder art for hack gce here's got art for all the different systems different letters it fits the sega genesis aesthetic perfectly this is the best art you can get for your sega genesis mini I'll leave a link in my description to his website where you can go and check out his work. Change your folder images, click the icon over here. Select the folder icon you want, then hit OK. We've set up the new icons and they look perfect. And now we're finally ready to move our games from our PC to our system. All you have to do is hit the synchronize selected games with mini button here and the games start transferring over. It actually goes really fast. Looks like everything transferred correctly. We're going to head over to the Sega Genesis mini and see how everything looks. Systems all booted up and here's all the games that we added here. Let's start one up with the native M2 Engage emulator real quick just to make sure it's functioning correctly. Looks like the game is running just fine and it's got all the features that you get when running any other game with M2 Engage. So if we hold down start for a couple seconds the M2 Engage menu will pop up. We have access to save and load save states. We can reset the game and return to the main menu. Let's start up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist, a game that we did not set with M2 Engage. Once again, the game seems to be running fine. No issues at all. Now because this game is not running with M2 Engage, holding down the start button for a few seconds will not do anything. Instead you'll have to go into the RetroArc menu and you can do that by hitting the reset button on the system. First thing we want to do is set a button combo so that we can access this menu within the game. So go down to settings, input, you want to go down to menu toggle gamepad combo. It's currently set to start and select which we don't have on a 3 button Genesis controller. By moving left and right you can choose a different combo. I prefer the hold start for two seconds. And now if I hold the start button for two seconds, the RetroArc menu pops up. Another really nice feature of Hackji is the ability to load any game through RetroArc, even if you didn't set the command line earlier. As long as you installed RetroArc and a Genesis core hitting the start button over a game, we'll load it directly into RetroArc. Rise from your grave. So you have the choice to load any game on the menu with M2 Engage by hitting the A button or through RetroArc by hitting the Start button. Let's take a look at the folders that we added earlier. Here we have our N64, 32X, Game Gear, and Master System. Hitting the A button on these folders will immediately take you into the next folder. So let's take a look at those games now.
The last one we're going to take a look at is an N64 game requested by Tony Madad in the comment section of the last video. So I don't recommend using this system to play N64 games. The hardware isn't great for it, but this game seems to be running really well. It's very smooth. I had to change some settings in RetroArc to get the controller to work well since we're not using the correct controller with the same amount of buttons as the N64, but this game seems to be running really, really nice, really smooth. And that's all I have for you guys, so make sure to leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this new version of Hack Sheet running on the Sega Genesis Mini. If you're having issues getting this working, I'll have the Discord link in my description where you can go to get some help. Make sure you keep coming back. I'm going to have a lot more videos showing what else you can do with this system, like setting up Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. That's it for me. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Eric Cologne, Jordy Alex, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Dor, Yaroslav Orudzov, Den Cardoso, Andre G, Randy Day, and Batman.